It is my absolute joy to introduce Julia Balaz to you again. Julia and I spoke about a year ago, and it was a pretty way out discussion then, and I think it's going to be even more way out today, because Julia is one of the very, very few astrologers who's specialising in galactic astrology, which is fascinating and really stretching our boundaries. Um, and for those of you who are not familiar with Julia's work, she felt guided to meticulously study astrological charts of her clients after they'd had QHHT regression sessions, that's quantum healing hypnosis sessions. And she was looking for some verification on extraterrestrial information that came up in so many sessions, which is fascinating. And as a result of analyzing over 2000 natal charts, which is just <laughs> enormous task, um, including fixed star alignments, Julia feels called to share her research data confirming epic cosmic orchestration i love that phrase epic cosmic orchestration and influence of deep space objects on our lives in support of our collective evolution julia's work continues to be shared across various astrological channels her latest includes the astrology hub platform where she's featured as one of the 12 uh, selected 12 teachers of the year for 2023 so Welcome, Julia. And I'm really going to hand the floor to you on this as the expert, because I know you're going to be touching on the, the galactic center, the super galactic center and the great attractor. And I know little about those, but you will obviously know way more. So, um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. So over to you, Julia. Thank you, Pam. Thank you for this wonderful opportunity. My goodness, since we spoke last, I think it was a year or a year and a half ago, the community of galactic astrology enthusiasts have, have grown so much. And I, uh, I feel very, very fortunate to continue attracting most amazing people that have brilliant minds and great passion for researching deep space objects and how they influence our lives alongside with me. So we have these regular monthly calls when we bring our discoveries together and we just continue validating over and over and over again the fact that we are influenced by whether it's the fixed stars or these mighty super cosmic points that I'm going to be talking about today. We are really seeing that people who have planets aligned or aspecting to any of these super points they are wired differently they really are embodying quantum awareness multidimensional thinking they are able to tap into past present future spontaneously in moments when it is required so we would have a lot of healing practitioners in whether qhht community or there are so many amazing fascinating uh, modalities people who have these uh, super points aligned to their planets, they find their way to these amazing healing services, assisting others to tap to the quantum field. They kind of act as anchors to this greater consciousness, like amplifiers, so that others can tap into it easier. So then they can access their past lives, ancestral stories, they can get to the core of the problems. But I'm also seeing these points manifesting with people who are not necessarily guided towards spiritual community. They are more in the mainstream, big corporations, and they are then guided by life to uh, situations in those big corporations where solutions are required that are influencing the collective in a positive way. Things that are really like quantum leap solutions where it really feels like for people watching that, oh my God, how did you just come up with that, that you know, uh, bringing uh, genius kind of uh, information out of thin air, but it's the natal planets aspecting or aligning these greater cosmic points um, as we are discovering over and over again. So I just feel super excited to present this information to the greater audience in hope to inspire uh, the striving astrologers and uh, astrology enthusiasts to start incorporating these points into their research, into their study and seeing through their own experience how much we are guided by these greater points and uh, deep space objects we really are connected to all that is so it's wonderful Fabulous. i can't i can't wait this is going to be absolutely marvelous <laughs> let's hope so so i've prepared a little presentation because i want to visually also engage uh, the viewers and help them really see the mightiness of, of these points i'm going to share my screen here all right here we have the 
beginning of the presentation. Before I go any further, I really want to honor Philip Sedgwick, brilliant astrologer, absolute pioneer in, in the field of astrology and study of deep space objects. Um, the huge volume of contribution that he is bringing to the astrology community is unprecedented. And I'm really honored for the opportunity to interview Philip uh, last year. Uh, the video can be found uh, on my Patreon. I made it available to public. So I'll include a link in the description of this video. Uh, Philip really has a, an amazing sense of humor and really just brilliant mind in how he uh, kind of downloaded the information about these black holes and how he observed them over decades. Uh, so it was really Philip's uh, work that planted a seed in our community. I was uh, emailed by several members within one week about Philip's work. And when I read a few of his articles, um, I was convinced that there is something much greater there. So as a result of Philip's research, we added the four super cosmic points, as I like to call them, to our free online calculator, which I'll mention later on as well. And we started paying attention to these points. So um, I strongly encourage anyone here who will get excited about today's presentation to visit Philip's website. He's just really brilliant. Um, so we're lucky to have him. And the point of this presentation really is the four super cosmic points that gravitationally directly impact our solar system. So here with this visual, I want to point out that our Earth is revolving around the sun. Our sun is revolving around the center of the Milky Way galaxy. And our Milky Way galaxy, along with about 30 other galaxies, is revolving around the supergalactic center, which is located in the Virgo cluster. And then all that is gravitationally pulled around the greater tractor, which we cannot even comprehend the mass uh, of this uh, object that is so mighty that it pulls towards its center thousands of galaxies. And uh, not so long ago, it was discovered that there is even greater force pulling the greater tractor along everything that's in it towards Shapley Attractor or Shapley Attractor. And I, I pronounce it as Shapley Attractor. So here we have it again, our local group, which includes the Milky Way Galaxy and Supergalactic Center pulled towards uh, the Great Attractor or along the Great Attractor towards Shapley Attractor. And this is really <laughs> hard to describe with words, the amount of gravitational force that is pulling towards it, hundreds of thousands, millions of galaxies. There is another force directly opposing Shapley attractor called dipole repeller, but Shapley is so much stronger than this repeller that it is pulling away galaxies from dipole repellers. So Philip um, calculated positions of over 8,700 deep space objects, and these four included in the ephemeris that is actually now included as part of the professional astrologer software. Um, so um, here I just have another visual of these. Uh, this is the universe within 1 billion light years from where we are and all the neighboring superclusters. There are billions of galaxies uh, in space. However, we like to focus on those that are or the superclusters and black holes that are directly influencing us gravitationally. So here we have our galactic center, supergalactic center, and uh, Shapley supercluster. So some people might think that, you know, this is so far away from us, there is not a chance that, that there will be some tangible or noticeable influence on our lives. However, when we start looking at the astrological charts and very a precise way of how these things manifest in people's lives. And when we see it over and over, like hundreds of charts validating same story over and over, I have no doubts that, that there is something to it. Because, you know, these forces of nature are invisible, yet they are there. We are not consciously aware of them, but we are moving at the speed of 700 kilometers per second in you know through space because of the mighty force of Shapley. The chart that I brought here today is for 23rd of May. I'm not sure when we will release this video, but it'll be before that. And I wanted to point out that our collective south node is going to be very precisely conjuncting Shapley attractor. So this year, 
uh, Philip is calculating or estimating the Chablis to be uh, at around two degrees of Scorpio, 39 minutes. Our south node has been coming to the proximity of Chablis for a while. Uh, we even had a solar eclipse uh, last year that was very tightly conjunct uh, Chablis attractor. And the way this seems to be manifesting, and I, I'm sure everyone is feeling this, is that we are all stimulated by this energy to ponder and think about what is behind the scenes, what is really going on. Because when we apply observational astrology concepts to, to these four points, Shapley, in its nature, the density of uh, gravitational force is so tight, is so mighty that it is bending light, mm -hmm. it is bending time and space. So Astronomers are actually able to look behind the, the Shapley. They're able to look behind the greater tractor, behind the supergalactic center, because the effect of the, this mighty force at the center of, of all these cosmic points is ability to bend light, time, and space. So with the south node conjuncting Shapley right now, especially after 23rd of May, when, when it will kind of reach its culmination point, and then the collective South Node will start moving away from Shapley, I feel that there will be a, you know increasing amount of revelations. What is really the intention of most influential people and organizations in this world, and in particular, anyone who has these cosmic points in their astrology. And I'm going to demonstrate that through various charts that I have as part of this presentation. I'll go through all these points because they all manifest in a, in a unique way. There is there is a certain distinction between them, and that will then kind of drive the point of, of this kind of evolutionary forces that we can locate in our astrological charts. You know, the, the galactic center at the 27 degrees of Sagittarius, when we connect to that frequency, we're able to, to access the quantum field. And from there, we can download solutions and inspiration that, that is applicable to our everyday life experience and especially people who have natal planets aligned to galactic center they seem to be really good at coming up with solutions that work that can be applied and it's really about um, reaching to the center of our being that allows us through the power of our mind our consciousness as we shift into altered brainwave states from the everyday beta brainwave state, analytical, logical, as we take a few deep breaths, we shift into alpha brainwave state, more relaxed and data, even gamma. And that those are the states that enable us to tap to the quantum field. And we can meditate on the galactic center with just a little bit of effort. We don't have to go far. It, it's going within. We can be there in a matter of a second, bending time and space point of this slide, I wanted to demonstrate uh, the importance of recognizing the thoroid field of our electromagnetic body. And through the power of our consciousness, through the intention and focus, then reaching that singularity, infinite point of our being to access these far distant places that in fact are all within us. Because the universe is fractal, it is holographic. And uh, anyone who is aligned to any of these points through their natal chart, they're operating that, that way. They understand the universe uh, as holographic and as fractal. So back to the galactic center. I encourage the viewers to identify in their astrological natal chart, where is galactic center degree uh, located? Which astrological house? What life area? is in around 27 degrees of Sagittarius. And we can be actually quite generous with the orb of influence with all these points. But the further away you go from the degree, the less intense the manifestation of, of the frequency will be in person's life. So, I so believe, Julia, which, what orb do you use? So between three to five for the galactic center, the super galactic center, five to 10, the great attractor, 
5 to 12 and same for Shapley. You can be really generous with these points. But again, it's, it's not like it cuts at any particular degree. It's just the intensity of manifestation or it, it will be much more noticeable the closer you get to the degree and less so the further away you go from the degree. You know, they really are powerful influence. So up to 12 for Shapley. Um, typically, I, I see within three degrees of galactic center, it, it's really obvious for, for people who have natal planets aligned within three degrees, you know, they, they can really recognize what I'm talking about in their own life. Wow. What we're also noticing it, it, is that people who have these um, points in their charts, they are pushed towards the center stage within their communities, whether it's school or work or then greater social groups uh, or organizations they work with, somehow people sense this great magnetic uh, frequency in their consciousness and they are pushed towards the center so that they can be an anchor for divine solutions that propel evolution in the organizations or whatever circle they're attending. So that's that's an interesting um, manifestation of that. Or they are guided towards professions that enable them to travel a lot. Any type of profession where you have an opportunity to meet many people and unconsciously you are shifting their consciousness towards these greater cosmic points. It, it's um, stuff that is happening behind the scenes, just like the gravitational pull of Shapley and the great attractor is happening very much behind the scenes and it's out of our control. We cannot really do anything about it, yet it's happening. So before I forget, that brings me to the point of Shapley, how, how very much that is applicable also in uh, people's lives, whoever, as Shapley, especially on their sun or ascendant or mid heaven, they experience their actions influencing greater collective. And I'll demonstrate that on the charts uh, that I'll show in a minute. I'm jumping back and forth. There's just so much information. And I'm eager and to make sure that I will not miss anything. So I hope the I hope you can follow. Does it all make sense so far? Yeah, absolutely. No, no, riveted. No, absolutely. Okay, wonderful. So even if we, if you don't have natal planets aligned to any of these um, super points, you can access these during transits. You know, we have moon transiting any one of these once every 28 days, right? You can focus on that. You can start paying attention. When is moon passing high degrees of Sagittarius? That would be a wonderful time to meditate with the intention to connect to the quantum field through your heart through the sun, through the galactic center, and ask to receive a download that will support your next steps in your evolution. And the thing with these black holes is that when you tap into them, when you are in them, when you are sucked into that high frequency cosmic consciousness, when you receive a download, whenever you share it with someone who is next to you, they just get crickets they, they cannot really comprehend it because it's so out of time and space and it usually philip has observed and as i reflected on, on my own life it takes about six to nine months after you receive the download for the for the collective to be able to comprehend it so when you start consciously connecting to these points uh, be at peace with that fact and trust that you will be able to deliver uh, the downloads and the, these divine solutions when they are needed. Precisely at the time, like magic happens, you will be able to, to do what needs to be done in order of supporting the evolution in a very tangible way. Okay, so if we identify the high degrees of Sagittarius in our natal chart, Reflect if that is the life area where you perhaps hold the highest potential for you reaching quantum field, reaching divine consciousness, cosmic consciousness, where you can really evolve towards your greatest potential. You know, what is the life area for you? For me, my Neptune and South Node are conjuncting the galactic center and at the eight house of everything that's hidden and the transformational stuff and other people's values. And I really find that I'm so drawn to that part of life areas because that's really where I am able to reach my highest potential by holding space for 
divinely inspired solutions to come up to getting to the core of the issues of other people. I was holding space for uh, through quantum healing hypnosis sessions for over seven years, assisting over 2000 people. And it was very much like that. It felt like I'm just holding space and people are drawing stuff out of cosmos to assist them to heal and to evolve. So, uh, and I've seen this over and over through, through many people. So once you reach that stage of your evolution and you kind of integrate the awareness of your ability to tap to cosmic intelligence, naturally life will pull you towards situations and experiences where it's time to integrate the super galactic center as the next octave of the galactic center gravitationally pulled right force so super galactic center is calculated currently at um, libra two degrees and 22 minutes so i we found that people with alignments to super galactic center they seem to have a theme in life of experiencing strong dynamics in their relationships and like insatiable need for relationships to fulfill the void inside them, like the black hole that wants to be fed, you know, like super galactic center is drawing towards it so many galaxies. So just like that, and the person is never really satisfied until they realize that they cannot externalize their need for love. They have to find a source of infinite love, unconditional love inside their being. Once they recognize it, then everything shifts and then they need to embody that wisdom of life experience, embody supergalactic centers frequency and teach others the importance of mastering relationship with self and others. Some people can have planets in high degrees of Virgo, and they will be conjuncting supergalactic center, right? Because if the orb is five to 10 degrees, even if you have planets not in early degrees of Libra, but late degrees of Virgo, you will have a supergalactic center conjuncting you. In fact, Philip Cedric himself, his Saturn in Virgo and South Node in Virgo is conjunct supergalactic center. So for him, it, it wasn't necessarily about relationships and love. For him, it was the expression of Virgo uh, that was magnified through the supergalactic center, deep, insatiable need for knowledge and perfecting something and improving something, you know, all that Virgo represents until he realized and integrated the teaching of the supergalactic center that it's not about never ending chasing of something that will satisfy you. You need to recognize that actually you have access already to all that there is to know and uh, you are the source of it it doesn't you don't need to externalize it and draw it to you from outside in it's it becomes from inside out and uh, perhaps the super galactic center conjuncting his south node and his saturn is the cause of him generating a huge amount of invaluable information that is evolving the entire uh, astrology community to the next level total quantum leaps as a result of his work isn't that so interesting yeah and and he does he is you know an absolutely heroic pioneer in in what he's done and the enormity of the information that he's managed to produce I, I mean i hope he'll win some award for this because he has stretched our consciousness so far out and um God bless him. I, you know, I'm delighted that we have Philip in our community as a as a leader. But you are very closely following his footsteps, clearly. Wow. And just just a question, um, as well, Julia. In terms of aspects, which do you find are the strongest? You know, thinking conjunction, square, opposition, trine. What, what would you say about the aspects? They're all there. They all matter and they all come up strongly. Conjunctions come up as uh, really beautifully integrated within the person's embodiment that manifests through the frequency of the planet that, that is drawing in the conjunction to these points. It's really quite obvious with conjunctions, but the oppositions are also very powerful because whatever is in uh, the planet that is opposing becomes magnified in its attraction towards the position of any of these super cosmic points. So there's a lot of energy and dynamic between the opposing houses. And there is a lot of uh, work and magnitude that almost doubles the life 
areas, like it, oppositions are also quite strong, then trines and sextiles really come, well, trines through the internal ability to just bring these solutions exactly when, when they're needed. It's similar as conjunct, but it's dormant more so, and it really is only coming up when it's needed. To me, always trying to feel like uh, in, when I'm watching the manifestations of them is like you, you hold the treasure box filled with skills and gifts that you acquired or over many lifetimes, but it's closed. And only when the situation arises where you're challenged by something, you open the box and you can access these things. So um, we see that also with these super cosmic points and then sex styles. It feels like divine blessings that come from external sources. People uh, find also in relations, they, they keep attracting people that have these points and it's like mut they, they mutually activate each other towards higher expression of their being and squares are very particular. People who have squares to these points, they find it really difficult to express higher consciousness, whatever, how, house uh, or life area through houses the position uh, of, of these points is in their chart they really struggle internally you know if i express the galactic center uh, let's say in my fourth house in my family it will not be received i'll be called a fool or i'll be misunderstood like there is a tension they have to find a way over the years as they mature to to notice the moments when it's safe for them to to speak multidimensionally or uh, to, to bring evolutionary ideas to their, to their experience. Usually I always then encourage with the squares to find where is the actual super cosmic point? What is the life area? And re recognize that that's the safe place for you to come out and bring these solutions. Do you know what I mean? So you're learning where and when to, to apply this, when to express it yeah, without being... Uh, ridiculed you know yeah okay so we mentioned the super galactic center now the greater tractor so if we think about the evolutionary journey of of our being of our consciousness as we are propelled towards self-mastery um, becoming divine human we integrate the galactic center we then learn about the relationship finding the kind of soulmate inside your own being and be satisfied in that and then the next point is the great attractor at 14 degrees of Sagittarius. This is where we are called to work with others, to apply everything we learned through Galactic Center and Super Galactic Center for a greater cause. And not as the preacher saying, what I know is the best, that's the only way. In fact, recognizing that there are many different paths that lead to the ultimate truth and that universe is fractal and holographic and you you act then when you're starting to in integrate great attractors frequency you act as an embodiment for inclusion and integration of all fragments so people who, who have the great attractor in their chart especially conjunct to their planets they will be acting as people that draw others to them for others to feel heard seen included and then healed and activated you know beautiful yeah it's really beautiful mm. i've got i've got that square my my mid heaven quite tightly three degrees mm. it's interesting okay so the square is the blessing in disguise where in every video you give a shout out to other sources of wonderful information yet you somehow manage to to make it uniquely yours like you have your own flavor that is known that is recognizable so perhaps that, that's how i would see that that square manifestation eventually we find a way to gracefully uh, embrace those different frequencies which you are really doing you truly are embodying that so so beautifully does that make sense yeah, thank you. It's wonderful. This feels very exciting because it, you know, it really is shifting us, as you say, in octaves of consciousness, these quantum leaps that your research, you're paving a path of light for others to be able to follow much more easily. We can follow in the slipstream of the research and the information and the knowledge that you're offering us. And that's what I feel is incredibly exciting. Am I making sense? 
Yes, perhaps my son in zero, at zero degrees of Aries uh, in my 11th house <laughs> has something to do with that, along with everything else that it's in my chart. Uh, thank you. Okay, so the next point is Shapley or Shapley attractor. When we integrate also the great attractor, then the next uh, point of our mighty evolutionary journey is the early degrees of Scorpio. Where is that in, in your chart? And when you really start paying attention to that life area, and certainly if you have planets there and becomes even mag more magnified, that will be the life area that is forced behind the scenes where your unconscious blueprints and, and coping mechanisms and habits are influencing actually everything else, you know, and realizing that if you dare to look inside a closet, you know, what's hidden there, look uh, underneath the carpet, what's hidden there. And when you take time to really get to the core of what really is the intention in this life area and then kind of transcend it to the to the next level can you bring integrity can you release any false attachments in order to become free to really get to the core of the essence of your being when you recognize the importance of that life area where early degrees of scorpio is and um, bring high integrity you know, being truly honest and really revealing your, your essence, your uh, real intentions, almost to the point where you have nothing to lose because you accepted or um, acknowledged the truth of your being, then you create this even mag more magnified, attractive force. You know, people admire people who got to that point where they have nothing to lose and they are liberated in their own being, right? When we notice people who have sharply connected uh, or aligned to their personal planets, especially the sun or even the ascendant, whatever they are guided to do, that seems to be like an, their individual guidance, there is something much greater. There is like a force that is actually acting behind the scenes. And what these people then manifest in their life or what they're guided to create um, in their life is in fact influencing uh, the collective uh, on a really powerful way. Some of the charts that I prepared here to demonstrate this example, how Shapley really is that mighty force that we are not consciously aware of. We cannot see it, but it is there. It's behind the scenes. Um, one of the persons that has Shapley conjunct natal sun and Neptune Kind of Shapley's um, in between the sandwich by the sun and Neptune here for uh, Bill Gates. And isn't it interesting that this person early on co-founded a software that most of the world is using? And isn't it so interesting that this software have back uh, door system installed in them where there's something happening behind the scenes that we are not entirely aware of. How much are we monitored? How much are we giving away when we are using his system? And then later on, as he got involved with the uh, you know, philanthropic uh, organizations, and I believe he owns the world's largest charity, private charity organization, and then getting involved with the whole vaccination uh, situation in the recent years, the whole world is somehow affected by the actions of this person, whether we're consciously aware of it or not. And the fact now that this is early degrees of Scorpio and our collective South Node is uh, passing through these very degrees, I believe that how this will manifest is ma revelations of the truth behind his intentions. Was he really the philanthropist or his, is he really the kind-hearted person that wants the best for all in this world as he would perhaps like to portray himself to be or the global mass media uh, are creating certain image for him. But, you know, with Chapley, it's always the words are one thing, but the actions are another. And with the collective South Node being activated in early degrees of Scorpio through Chapley, everyone is focusing their attention to what is really the intention behind this man's action what is the truth what is really happening behind the scenes <laughs> i can't wait 
Julia. So that will be absolutely fascinating. And as you as you picked up in your email to me, I think it's also, and I've mentioned this in a previous video, it's also very interesting that the UN as an organization has their son at zero of Scorpio. NATO has their ascendant. Uh, oh, you're going to come on to this. Two degrees of Scorpio. And the EU's IC is at two degrees of Scorpio. Are you going to include all of these? Okay, fantastic. I'm really looking so, forward to this. Absolutely. So indeed. And then, so the next example that I had uh, ready was Vladimir Putin, pres current president of Russia. It, the Chaplis on his ascendant. So just wow. like with Bill Gates, we will know the truth behind his intentions is he really the villain that he's portrayed to be or is there something else you know i i really feel with the exactitude kind of being reached uh, if there is such a thing with chapley exactitude you know 23rd of may and beyond the up until that point when the south node was kind of heading towards the the chapley i feel the resistance to revealing the truth was really strong and after that a uh, very particular point will be reached so late may and beyond for the following months i feel that resistance is going to be lessened and whoever is close to these people will be guided to reveal the truth in a really powerful way because um, it, you know, it just makes so much sense. And I believe you also mentioned in some of your videos that the way astrology, the planets are arranged for the rest of the year, it's really the people that are close to people of influence that will be the whistleblowers. You know, that's how the stuff will come out. So I'm really, really at the edge of my seat uh, to see what will happen. And of course, yeah. all of this is happening, Julia, with that at, around the um, the fixed grand cross, the fixed grand square, that is in the second, which is kind of really running 20th, 21st of um, of May. Yeah, very close to this. I mean, and that's where I was seeing a lot of revelations and disclosures. I mean, this is going to be absolutely fascinating, isn't it? It's just yeah. such an incredibly powerful period. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Edge of my seat too. I think so much is going to come out so quickly and, you know, it's very interesting as well as that Neptune is going to be square the galactic center for the next three years, actually, isn't it? Yes. Um, very so what, what I sense this might do on an individual level is that there there is evolutionary force pushing us towards evolution. And we are going to start receiving these um, downloads or realizations of what can we really do? do when we start reaching towards our higher potential but with the square there we will not really know how to express it how to become this different person that suddenly speak in a higher frequency for many people who who are not used to that at all who were just flicking through um netflix and and just not really expanded their consciousness to other stuff um uh, I don't mean to <laughs> degrade uh, Netflix or that way of living, but there will be there will be a huge amount in the collective that will suddenly have leaps of consciousness towards higher frequency. And through that Neptune square, they will be really not sure how to express it, how how what to do with it. You know how it's it's going to be so strange for them to to apply it. So it's like it's going to be an inattention between embodying and expressing higher consciousness and how do you do that you know if, if it's a new thing to you do, do you resonate with that yeah absolutely and I think at another level for you know people who are a little further along the spiritual path and again no judgment we're all on our own time scale and journey yes. it could be a lot of spiritual inspiration really building very strongly into 2026 when I think it's square the galactic center pretty much the whole year in 2026 so really helping us to jump to that higher octave and that this big new beginning i think is also signaled by um jupiter conjunct the north node this higher consciousness jump this this bigger future collective vision um that's operating at a different level and i'm going goosebumpy now because I, I feel that's just so exciting yes i'm so so grateful to the huge army uh in the best um sense of the word possible of light workers who have been preparing and uh, and kind of getting used to the, the higher frequency whereas for them this square will feel very empowering and they will be able to to express it in a comfortable way 
So uh, there, there's always two ways of how Square comes out. If, if you've done the work, it's a blessing um, in disguise. If you haven't, it's really challenging. But if you're willing to work with it, it, it can be very rewarding. And yeah. isn't it interesting as well, Julia, that we've got Pluto in that long term square to the nodal axis all year till November? But it's particularly intense yeah. from until mid July. And this really is another choice point and another leap in our perspectives and our consciousness, isn't it? Reinforcing all that you're saying about Shapley. I, I think it's absolutely just fascinating. Yes. So here I, I highlighted the, the square of Pluto through yeah. the nodes or through Shapley. And then the blessing there is trying Pluto trying supergalactic center. So the way I feel this will manifest is, you know, supergalactic center, if you remember, I mentioned it's about mastering relationships with self and others. So if we can leverage this trine of Pluto to supergalactic center, we can be held by the relationships and by the realization that we first need to find the soulmate inside our own being. When we do that, we feel more confident. We attract not needy relationships, not toxic relationships. When we heal the relationship within the self, the attraction point towards others' uh, relationships, it's much, much higher frequency. So they become, you know, supportive, encouraging. So that's how we can really use this Pluto trine supergalactic center. And that will then allow us to dare to reveal our core, our essence, our true motivations, and uh, kind of transcend this Pluto square Shapley or square the nodes. I think that might be. And also here, Saturn is, is trining, although with a wider orb, Shapley attractor that would act in a similar way. Yeah. So exciting. Beautiful. Bring it on. So... I've mentioned these two charts, United Nations. Yeah, I would say there will be some revelations about that too, just by the sheer fact that their sun is now conjunct the collective South Node and the Shapley and the European U Union, same thing, sun, and also Jupiter. They're kind of sandwiching the Shapley there. Um, watch the space. I can't wait to, to see the, you know, the information that will start coming up. In the media. So this is just another version of the slide that people can take a kind of screenshot of the quick overview that the galactic center really is like a link to the quantum field for solutions, upgrades, evolution. And remember that super galactic center is all about mastery of relationships with self and others. The great attractor, it's about inclusion, integration of fractals of the whole and the chapel it's really behind the scenes, an exceptional influence. So find these points in your natal charts and uh, see how they can help you evolve towards greater peace, uh, unity, mastery. And uh, if you have planets there, can you recognize how life is pushing you towards the center stage in whatever collective you're involved with, whether on a smaller scale or larger scale? And can you allow yourself to embody this cosmic, mighty, mighty energy that can be here to serve others and to help us evolve um, towards the next octave of, of humanity, of humanity's potential. Yeah, really wonderful, Julia. It's so inspiring because my focus tends to be the Kuiper Belt objects, the dwarf planets. They fascinate me and they also represent a higher octave of consciousness. But either way, we are we are moving our focus out to the cosmos in a much bigger way out to the universe in a way that we certainly have never done in this lifetime and and I think m many lifetimes, but we are reconnecting to our galactic heritage. And that's what your research here is 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 really teaching as well, which is 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 just so exciting. It's a it's a marvelous presentation, really inspiring. Thank you, Pam. What I love seeing is the generations, the most recent generations had these super cosmic points at their at the outer planets. There is a whole collective of individuals that are carrying this potent frequency in their own being. And many are going to continue to be activated in their own time based on their own individual transits. But there is a lot of this amazing consciousness, you know, embodied on Earth. So it, I really feel like it's it, it's it has to be quantum leaps. It's not going to be incremental baby steps. We will surprise ourselves how much we can grow once truth is revealed and trauma healed. Then oh, it's going to be exciting 
Yes. Yeah, so. and I think that, you know, the next few years are, are going, going to go at a pace that is unrecognisable. If we look back to our past and how slow and dense that's been, it, it's it's barely possible to imagine how fast we're going to move in these next few years. I think it's going to be absolutely extraordinary. And yet, it, as as you really said, Julia, anybody who has a sort of um, a generational planet around but, about two degrees of Scorpio, that's going to be fascinating because they are going to be highly, highly activated with this, which is... It's just thrilling, really, to to think, um, particularly the young people, I think, as we move towards more Aquarian energy, are going to step into influential roles, not as top down leaders in the way we have had in the past, but um, visionaries, pioneers, progressives. Um, and they are going to be changing the world, I think, really, really rapidly. But it was so exciting because, you know, I'm aware of the galactic centre, the supergalactic centre and the great attractor, but not um, not this Shapley super, um, super cluster. And, yeah, it's very interesting. I've, I have my Saturn conjunct that, my moon um, trine to it very, very tightly, in fact, exactly by degree. My Mercury opposing the supergalactic centre, my son squaring the galactic center. So yeah, I've got a lot of lot of contacts. Okay, so now. with regards to Saturn conjunct Chapley, so is your Saturn in Scorpio or Late Libra. Libra? High Libra. Libra. Okay. So it's likely then you may have had a hyper awareness of the importance of balance, harmony, high integrity. And if you didn't do that in, in your earlier years, life would slap you very fast <laughs> right back. And you it's almost like you're forced by life to embody the integrity, balance, harmony, and really be disciplined uh, and really diligent as, as Saturn would call you. But so it's like magnified. And when you do that, it's very rewarding. I have Saturn also. Um, I have Saturn in early Scorpio, tightly conjunct Chapley and my Pluto in high Libra, tightly conjunct Chapley. So these two are sandwiching and in, in my sixth house. So like I just said, I was super uh, aware of how everything is connected to everything and how one thing leads to another uh, from early on. And I really have to be very disciplined and with high integrity. If I'm not, it's really not worth it. So, uh, but as I am there, yeah, yeah. But you know, you're I have Pluto, you know, you're yeah, even though I have Pluto square Pluto right now, uh, now transiting my 10th house, I want to touch words that because I'm so diligent, uh, that I, I feel they're really rewarding and, and graceful. There's still some things that I continue to clear, but it's it's good. It, it's not all scary. <laughs> they, they can really reward you beyond your wildest dreams if you continue to be willing to evolve and act with integrity, even behind the scenes because it's the behind the scenes that counts, those little micro decisions every day that others don't see. Yeah, absolutely, 100%. And I think integrity is the watchword going forwards because those people who are not living in and speaking and acting and working in integrity will be uncovered um, as we move through these next few weeks, not even months, but weeks. It's super close now, but... Um, but you are definitely someone, Julia, who is walking her talk and, and making a, a massive contribution to to astrology. And I, I really want to thank you and congratulate you because it's wonderful that you are taking on really the um you know the mantle of Philip Sedgwick, who has done so much for us. And 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 very, very few astrologers are working in this field. I know you have a, a teaching school as well of galactic astrology, so that's gonna help a lot. But you're you're leading the field in that. So uh, so thank you. Thank you. Well, I want to shout out to all the wonderful uh, practitioners of galactic astrology, people who are really choosing to do that for, for, for living and dedicate uh, day and night to, to study of these deep space object and helping people decode their charts. There, there are hundreds of them now, so I'm sure they'll exceed uh, what uh, Philip have um, started here. So there, there'll be so many more that'll carry the torch. So... Thank you, everyone, for yeah, fascinating. I just can't wait to see what happens to those individuals and organisations as we move through the next few weeks and months. It's going to be quite a wild ride this year, I think, <laughs> starting very soon yes. at a similar yes. near you. <laughs> Thank Wonderful. you so much, Julia. I've really, really Thank loved you. it. Here we are. We'll see you soon. Love to everyone. Thank you.